Super Paper Mario, a Wii game that was originally intended for the GameCube, which tries to live up to the previous game by changing it entirely. Hello and welcome to the Cut Content Off, a show where we try to find content that you weren't able to see in some amazing games. This game, which released on the Wii in 2007, was originally planned to be a GameCube game. This means that a large amount of cut content was left behind through the conversion process between the two systems. The Korean version released two whole years later and contained some extremely strange unused levels and even cat people. Looking into this version's files, we can find 11 unused levels, which all contain clues towards a scrapped, cancelled game from intelligent systems. Most of these levels only display properly in the 3D mode, showing us that these were likely not intended for Super Paper Mario. All were created after the game's original releases anyway. Level 0 is a grassy place with a house and some cartoonish trees. It looks similar to the opening cutscenes from the Paper Mario games and could have been intended for this game, or may have been part of a possible cancelled game. This level goes for a more fabric-like, stitched art style, so it may not have been for Paper Mario. Next is a desert island with a curvy tree and some hand-drawn flowers. This level and the last one were both created on the 24th of April. The next two were created three days later, on the 27th of April. Number 2 and number 3 are both identical, but number 2 has an odd camera position that doesn't change when switching from 2D to 3D. Number 4 is the biggest of them all. Created on the 31st of May, it's much bigger than anything seen in Super Paper Mario, and is a little more like past games in the series. Colourful, branching pathways go all the way around the map, and one pathway leads into a more spooky area with darker grass and no leaves on the trees. This may have been some kind of entrance into the level, or an exit leading to another part of the story. A group of four cats standing on two legs are in this level. They're completely flat, and each of them has a different art style. All were created after Super Paper Mario's original release, and are each named after an artist from Intelligent Systems. Near the cats is an invisible arch that's only in the level's collision file. The leftmost cat has a dark blue outline, and would probably fit within the Paper Mario world. The next one is much more detailed. Second from the right is one that appears to be a 3D rendered cat, and on the very right is a black cat with a similar style to the other detailed cat, but this one has individually drawn strands of fur. These may have been created to test out different art styles for this possible game. On the 14th of June, another level was created, which is similar to the 4th level as it is larger and has the same 4 cats. But the trees are much different and there are some odd areas with different colours. On the same day, a white cat was created and left in the files. More on its significance in a little while. Level 6 is another island-like level, but the trees are green and there's a signpost with two arrows but no text. It was created on the 19th of June. Just over a week later, on the 27th, level 7 was made. It's like the last one, but is a pathway in a forest. The final three levels, 8, 9 and 10, were all created in July 2007, and feature the white cat mentioned earlier. All of these levels are wide green fields. The backs of the trees are not visible, so the camera was likely similar to how it is in Paper Mario. In the model, the group that the white cat is in is called Player, this means that this cat was probably the final design that the developers had decided on, and that this would be the protagonist. Those are all the levels that are left in this version of the game that aren't at all related to Paper Mario. It's definitely quite strange that these managed to get into the files, but it's very interesting. It could have been a completely scrapped game, or a different story for Paper Mario where he visits a world of cats. Now let's look at the stuff left in the files that is actually Paper Mario related. Some characters were given a resolution upgrade for the Wii. Mario's old GameCube texture was left in the files. Its resolution is only around two-thirds of the Wii version. Mario's also got an unused animation with a side view of him climbing. Also, an earlier version of Peach is in this game as well, from when it was only a GameCube game. She doesn't have her ponytail, but does have the outline of her longer hair in the unused version. Peach's parasol also has a GameCube version, with a handle that isn't transparent like it is in the Wii version. GameCube versions of some button prompts exist here, with a green one for A and a red one for B. There are a couple of unused files dating back to 2003, which were also found in the previous game's files. They include Paper Sample, Vivian.bin, and Yubi. Both games were created in the same engine, since the previous game's files can be read by this game. An early title screen can be found with a different year for the copyright notice, and a ladder-shaped pixel behind Mario and Bowser. 
There are some unused enemies that work through hacking and some that don't work. First, let's look at the ones that don't. They are an animated fly guy, a spear guy, and a stilt guy, two of which were in the original Paper Mario N64 game. Monty Mole has a bunch of sprites that don't get used. They would have popped out of walls and thrown rocks at you. Wiggler has an unused head and body, and has only appeared in Paper Mario sticker stuff. Here are the enemies that are programmed in, but don't ever appear. A green version of the Boom Boxer enemy, with only 1 HP. A spiny that attacks when approached. The Shady Cooper, a spinier, and the red, green, and white Magic Coopers from Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. The Magic Coopers can even ride a broomstick. The Cut Dark Atomic Boo boss from that game is also in this one's files and a wheel with four of the current active character that spins around rapidly. Four unused Yold Town residents exist, which are early designs seen in pre-release screenshots. We can see one with the square head, one with the square head cat ears and triangular body, and one with a completely yellow face. Only one small character has its animations left behind, meaning the other three just stand there without moving. They did have animations which were cut, as they can be seen in different positions in the early screenshots. Unused items in this game include a pink cooking disc, the booze sheet item from the previous game, a key, and the same key but with inverted colours. A song from Super Mario Bros. 3 may have been used to test sound, as it's called Dummy underscore 32K. There's a jingle for solving a puzzle at E3, and one for failing. A song exists that would have played when using the Happy Flower item. It's only 15 seconds long. Have a listen. Here's an excerpt from a calm, relaxing piece of music called Event Underscore Relax One. Here's an excerpt from a completely unused song that remixes the original theme from Super Mario Bros. If you've not already seen it, we've got an episode on the previous game, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. If you like this video, share it with someone who might be interested, and subscribe! Click or touch here to watch our Mario games playlist.